Hi there YouTube and makers and welcome back to my channel. Glad that you could spend your time with me. Now I wanted to really briefly and quickly go over the contents of the Sherline Mill Package A. In my case it's for the 5800 Next Gen Mill. I'm really excited and enthusiastic. I really appreciate all the comments and support and suggestions I've been getting from all you guys and gals out there on YouTube. I was so excited, in fact, that I couldn't wait to buy some more accessories and parts for this 5800. And late one night when my finger was hovering over that mouse, I was fractions, thousands of an inch away from clicking confirm your order. And I realized that I probably should double check the contents of my package to see that if I really did need some of that stuff. And I'll provide a few little observations and insights so that someone looking at like a package can decide if they may want to get the package or perhaps go out on their own and buy a different kind of part. Come on over here and join me at the bench and let's check out what's in this mill package A. Now I know previously I've already opened up the tooling plate, but I wanted to kind of take it out because it's a bit of an accessory and it is, while not included with the late package A, with this mill it was a add-on item. So let's take a look here. You got ubiquitous instructions, which nice thing about Trailline, you get a paper instructions. They have link to all those instructions online, as well as you get kind of this accessory instruction book. It has everything. First one we come to is a set little baggie here that's got a bunch of T-nuts and pins to attach the tooling plate to the mill table. And of course, the oh so lovely Sureline tooling plate that's been pre-drilled and tapped, beautifully chamfered. The mill table is only about this wide, so you can see it's quite an extension, probably probably doubles the size of the y-axis. So the back side here, very, very nicely milled, very well finished, nicely deburred. Nice edge all the way around. I could only hope to be able to get such a nice edging on all my finished parts. Very nice piece. Very nice upgrade. I'm glad I went with it. I think it's going to be a great resource to have. The next item on the agenda is going to be this uh, PN3013. So all this stuff from Sherline can be purchased separately or in my case, like I said, it came with a lathe, or mill, not lathe, excuse me, mill package A. And nice and box, so another set of instructions here. Got a uh, couple little baggies, so some all thread, and looks like uh, some T nuts in here. Some all thread, this is this sort of chamfered washer, some T nuts. Oh, there's a couple different lengths of this all thread. And then a set of step lock hold downs. Like it comes with three of these triangular ones, and then two of these ones. The next item on the agenda is the Sherline T driver in five thirty seconds, part number thirty twenty. Here is mine. 
that I've been using from the lathe. They, they're identical. Uh, I don't think I'm going to break out this new one because I've already got this one. and I don't want to over clutter my workspace. It comes with a, another set of center drills, the part number 3021. The three center drills are going to be a zero here, a number two, and a number three. Now we're really getting into mill specific stuff. I've got a 3052 fly cutter, this guy right here. Comes with a, another draw bar and it's identical for the one that works with the Jacobs chuck. Another set of instructions. And then the fly cutter. It's got a brand new and covered in wax here. Braze carbide insert. You see the cut cutter here. Looks like a well, I shouldn't look like. I the spindle for the Sherline should be a number one Morris taper. So that's the flat cutter. Next we've got the mill collet set, part number 3060. Here. Glad Sherline's so generous with instructions and everything. So, an instruction sheet. So, in and out by loan printout. Another draw bar. So, this is the one for the fly cutter, and this is the one for the mill collet set. So, it's a little bit shorter and a heavier bolt, a beefier bolt. So the three collets we have here are going to be an eighth inch in, or 0 0.1250, they're SP collets. This is a 3 16 in 0 0.1875. I really like they've got this nice engraving and they have both the fractional and decimal measurements. And finally a quarter inch or 0 0.2500. So they go to the Ten thousandths place on these collets. Curious if they're really able to hold that tight of a tolerance. The one lamentable point about this mill is that, by and large, the most having conversations with uh, other viewers is that by and large the most common mill is going to be a three eighths shank, and unfortunately the mill for the shear line do, doesn't take a collet at the 3 8 So I have to end up using, which will be this right here, a end mill holder. Part number 3079, the 3 8 end mill holder. So this is what kind of spurred making sure that this, uh, review, this uh, unboxing happens is that we're having conversations with another viewer and um, talking about end mills and end mill holders and didn't really check my package A and it ends up finding and I end up finding out that luckily before I bought anything that the package A does come with all the base really the most important basics to get going and that's and one of those things is this 3 8 end mill holder because apparently 3 8 is the most common end mill size so an instruction pack Oh, has a nice little thing here that oh, talks about milling collets and shows all the sizes. Unfortunately, no 3 8s, but it shows their metric as well as their decimal and fractional, so it looks like it goes up to a quarter inch. 
nicely packaged in this rust inhibiting paper. So that's, I'm always glad to see that. It comes with a, another Tommy bar. So in total, so the lathe came with one Tommy bar. And then this comes with, from the milk hall, it's, other, its own Tommy bar. And see the set screw here. Kind of surprised there's no hex wrench for this. But set screw here. And this uh, threads into the spindle of the mill. Next, we got something a little more fun, and that is the mill vise, part 3551. Got another instruction sheet. A set of right angle clamps as well as their T-nuts and bolts to clamp the mill base down to the mill table. And the mill, as you can see, it's still perfectly sealed and taped up. So I haven't even had a chance to look or handle this thing yet. So I'm glad to be able to share this with you. It's a interesting weight going on. I think it's uh looks like an aluminum body. Of course it takes the X. The you can see on the underneath how it's set up. So it's set up similar to a tool maker's vise. I believe that's aluminum though. Let's uh take our magnet you can see on my welding table it sticks my center drills picks these guys up so let's check these they're aluminum aluminum of course aluminum steel 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 and does not look like steel, but the jaws are indeed made out of a ferrous material. So this works, gonna unscrew that to release tension on this barrel. I believe it's called a barrel. And that allows the jaws to open and then screwing it down again puts tension and draws on it and draws the jaws close so put a lot of lubrication and the kind of a pale clearish is probably super loop seem to use that on everything and it's a nice loop seems to work well though I have discovered a red lubricant on the mill so Based on its tackiness and its smell, and I did verify it by smell, because because recently I've been had to do my own bearings in my own vehicle, so I believe they're using um, Lucas Oil's uh, Red and Tacky on the mill saddle. So you see the sealed box. I haven't had a chance to open it yet, but I get to share it now with you guys. Let's see how do I want to do this. I think that looks like a seam. So I want to store it in this box, maybe. But we'll see. Let's see if I can get this open without slicing my finger open. Okay, so that's a box that needs to be torn, I guess. an outer shipping box of some sort. So not a box to save. And so here it is. Comes in a block of wood. Don't think I could have saved that box. 
two flutes set. So, so Main China, this one by a company called MHC, comes with six two flute end mills in this little block of wood, which mostly I'm sure for shipping, but I think I'll probably keep that. It seems convenient. And boy, they are sharp. So looks like they're all the same. So this is a three eighths by three eighths, the largest one in the set. So you get two of the same uh, cutting edges. It's a nice little set. I like that. And I like how this blocks. It's nice and neat. So I had to take a moment and wipe it off because it is a snug fit. So that is a tight tolerance end mill holder. And I'm going to use this block because the last thing I want to do, well, some people may find it entertaining, but I don't think I'll be entertained shoving an end mill through my hand before, at least before I make any chips. So I'm going to slide this on. And I'm just using this Wheeler pin. I think they're called like a gunsmithing block. Just slide that down. And pulled out my small hex key. So that just sits like that. This is pretty tight, so I think it's going to work well. We'll have to see. But these end mills are darn sharp. So nice to have this block, nice soft nylon block to push them back out. So that's going to be nice, I think. That is the mill package A. Pretty complete and comprehensive, I think. And I think it's got everything that I need to kind of get going and do the milling work on the Kozo Hiroka Pennsylvania A3 switcher steam locomotive engine in three quarter inch scale to run on a three and a half inch gauge track. And hopefully you'll find this information useful and for someone who's shopping around and thinking about whether they want a Proxon or a Tag or a Warco or Sherline or any other of the kind of home sized bench top mini micro machines that this will help you make your decision. So if you're interested in checking out your own Sherline Mill or the Package A, as well as maybe the bench block that I used or anything else you see, be sure to check out the links below. And so that you don't miss when I put this tooling and this mill to the test and get it going on my make of the steam locomotive engine, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. I really appreciate it, and I'm glad I could share some of this with you. Till next time, have fun, stay safe, and keep making chips. Mm -hmm.